Hello and welcome everybody to your Logger Pro tutorial. So tonight I'm going to take a look at showing you guys how to set up the graphs for the worm experiment data that we use for the poster that's due on Monday. So this is what our Logger Pro file looks like when you first open it. We want to start by labeling our data set. So what we're going to do is we're going to make the graph for the number of worms responding. So our first data set is going to be the strong response. Okay, so I did that by double clicking on data set and then entering my label. Now we always put our independent variable or manipulated variable on the x-axis. In this case, you manipulated the concentration of the metal. And I'm going to do this, we'll say for copper. And the units we measured in were parts per million. So PPM goes into the unit section. Notice that it then places that as my label on the axes. Next, my Y variable, my dependent or responding variable, you measured the number of worms responding to that particular concentration. Okay, so this would be what we are going to use to create our bar chart. So we tested 1,000, 100, 10, 1, and 0.1. Okay, now what I'm going to show you here, I'm going to snap to the side. I know it's very tiny. Um, but the graphs or the tables that I have over here would be built. These are the data tables that we created together in class. So what I'm looking for, the twos, a two is a strong response on this table, a one is a mild response, and zero is no response. So I see here all twos indicates that a thousand I have four worms responding at a thousand. I see here I have two worms with a strong response at a hundred and no worms with a strong response after that. So that is my first data set. You will notice that because of the scale, it's spread out very far. There's a couple points close together right here. So we are going to work with some of the options in the graphing program. So you will right or double click graph options. We want to give it a title. So here it is, number of worms responding to different concentrations of copper. We will eventually need a legend so we can check that box right away. And then this particular graph is going to be a bar graph. Now, because of our axes and using it the way we did, we have to check the log axis to make it space correctly. I'm also then going to set my left and right to 0.1 and 10,000 just to shorten it up a little bit. Our highest possible option is a 4 on the y-axis, so I'm going to set that to a 5. So now we see that our data is showing up. Here's my 1,000 point, here's my 100, and you'll see the bars are evenly spaced. So now we need to add our information for the other two data sets. Data, new data set, it adds it in over here. I'm going to double click here and rename this mild response. So this was our second possible option. As you can see, because we already labeled correctly, those carried over. So again, 1000. Sorry, that came from over before. It's easier to use the down arrow instead of enter. Now as I look at my data, I see here no mild responses for 1,000. I have 2, 4, 3, and 1. So I can come back here. 0, 2, 4, 3, and 1. 
Now you will notice that it's not showing up. We'll take care of that in a moment. First, I would like to put in our last data category, data, new data set. I'm going to label that no response. Again, 1,110, 1. Sorry about that, had to fix something. And then our no response, we have 0, 0, 1, 3. Okay. So one response with no response, three with no response. 0, 0, 0, 1, 3. So in order to make those second and third data sets show up, we need graph options. Notice I'm already in Axes Options. You're going to click the plus sign to show the options, and we always use the Y axis label. So you will see number of worms responding is our label on the Y axis. Do not click the X one, it will put that data in. Okay. So now you will see with the way that we have this scaled, it overlaps the bits a little bit. So by clicking and dragging, when we get that kind of wiggly with the bar, That'll help spread out our data a little bit. So you want to have the graph cover as much of that space as you possibly can. So now what we see is that this data is over 10 to the negative 1. This data is over 10 to the 0. This data is over 10 to the 1. This data is over 10 to the 2. And then this data would be over 10 to the 3. So I'm going to move that just to try to bring that back into the scale. So this graph shows our legend, shows a title, we have our labeled axes, and all of our data is present. This would complete one of your graphs for your worms responding to a particular metal.